seven best and worst condos promos and incentive that you can get from a developer according to a realtor. Hello friends, Yossi Kaplan here, your friendly Toronto real estate agent and mortgage broker. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about the seven best and worst, in my opinion, condo promos and incentives a developer can offer you. So before we start, I have a great list here. It's a quick introduction. Yossi Kaplan, UrbanRealtyToronto.com is my main site for many, many years. Been practicing since 2005. I put a Toronto 2020 update um, recently after the whole situation started. If you want to check it out, a lot of great information here on Urban Toronto, UrbanRealtyToronto.com. Uh, you can go to TorontoCondosForSale.com. That's my site. Let's refresh. I think I just uh, give it a refresh. Yeah. And you can do searches here, both for existing and pre-construction. Just go pre-construction list here. or go to the bottom. So Toronto Condos for Sale, very useful information. Twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, where I put the info. There's 2,188 subscribers so far. Here's the YouTube channel, Yossi Kaplan. I also have a marketing agency, Kaplan Media Group, where I take all the information I've learned throughout the years and I give it back to you. So if you need lead generation, digital marketing, SEO services, Shopify, all that stuff that I've been doing for myself, we now offer that as a service. You click on the services here, we have leads for lawyers, for realtors, for teachers, coaches, healers, Shopify stores, all the good stuff. Okay, finally we have the condo calculator. Uh, the YouTube is not connecting, but it will connect if you go uh, Yossi Kaplan condo calculator, you'll find the video. It's a YouTube problem. Uh, and the condo calculator will allow you to download uh, a sheet, a spreadsheet, and basically check if the condo you want to buy will break even or not based on all kinds of parameters you can enter. Okay, so here we go. The seven best and worst condo problems and incentives according to Toronto Realtor, Yossi Kaplan. I've been around since 2005. I'm a search Realty Corp. My main areas are downtown, King West, Yorkville, Young and Lawrence, 401 and Extended Toronto. My specialties are pre-construction, assignments, and resale. And my main sites, I have more, is yossikaplan.com, urbanrealtytoronto.com, torontocondensforsale.com, uh, Toronto kaplanmediagroup.com, which is our marketing services site, YouTube slash Yossi Kaplan, and Condon Calculator. Okay, let's start with the very first one, which is the deposit structure. So what happens with the deposit structure? When you, when you um, want to buy a condo, a brand new condo, from a pre-construction condo, from a developer, from a developer, What's going to happen? The developer will say, you know, we're going to stretch that deposit structure for you. So instead of doing 555, say 5% within the first 30 days, the next 5% in 60 days, and another within 90, 180 days, many developers now are asking for 10% uh, for the first six months and another five, another five later. Now, there's good and bad about these things. The good is, of course, that if you only have 10% right now and you want to buy and you got some money coming in, you can actually get in and maybe put your offer on that condo. That This is a brand new construction, by the way. This is for pre-construction I'm talking about, okay? Um, the problem, of course, is if everyone is doing that, then you gotta think to yourself, well, maybe these buyers are not as strong if everyone's doing a 10%, and then they won't have more, uh, more 10%, then what are you gonna do? Uh, a lot of people can default, so you gotta be careful with that. So it's got, it's got you know, I'll give it like, it really depends. If everyone's using it, then it's becoming really risky, and I'll give it a grade, this promo of maybe 60 or 70 percent, uh, because it's putting you at risk. Otherwise, it's a great idea if you have the money and everyone else in the building, ha they have the money, and they only, you only have to put 5 percent or 10 percent now. It's usually 10, 10, and the rest later, it's okay. All right. The next, uh, the next uh, incentive we got here, you can see the list, uh, is a free assignment with the legal fee. What does that mean? That means that if you're buying, if you're buying from the developer, okay, developer will say, look, you can assign for free. I'm not going to charge you any fee, developer fee, because they can do it. Uh, usually it's like $5,000, $10,000, but I'm going to charge you a legal fee for my lawyer to do the paperwork. And usually it's $500,000. So that's not a bad incentive if you plan to assign. Now, a lot of buildings, and when you go to the Toronto Condos for Sale here, we got the VIP club. If you put your information, every new, uh, every new building coming in, you'll get a, a quick email about it. And you can see the latest projects. You can view more. This is on Toronto Condos for Sale. It's all automated. So, for example, um, 
these are some condos you can you you can see they're coming out or just started you can go by product status if i go back i'm going to go back to the 28 eastern which was just recently launched so let's say for example this project okay they're going to give you let's say they give you a free assignment on that project what does it actually mean it means that if you bought a unit here then you wanted to flip it to assign it later you're not going to have to pay the assignment fee okay so it's more attractive to you because you're going to save five or ten thousand dollars plus hst um, however, you know, there's, there's a problem with it, which is, it's basically they saying anyone that wants to assign, come here. So if you buy into a building, which is a high rate of investors, 80, 90, 95% investors, it's a wonky building. What if, uh, what if something happens in the economy like we're seeing now, and you got a problem with it? So you got to think to yourself, uh, for me, I'm a very conservative person. I like to buy where there's a lot of end users, and usually those buildings are they have larger units, they have more proportion of uh, larger units, more bedrooms, larger size, so more of end user. When you're buying a building with a lot of uh, investors, there's a lot of the developer will give an, an uh, incentive um, to the investors, so free assignment, stretch the fees, all that stuff, stretch the uh, deposit, which is great, um, but if you time that by 95%, everyone is on that train, that's to me, increasing the risk for everyone. And it is what it is, okay? So this is also on the, on the um, 60, 70% in my scale. I'll give it higher. If I know there's only so many investors in the building, that's very attractive. But if the majority, like the vast majority, over 80% of the buyers in a certain building, I'm just picking on 20 Eastern because it's right in front of me, but it could be anyone. Then just think to yourself, what happens if everyone wants to sell? Okay, if there, there's, there's, a, there's a glut in the market, there's more units in the market. So that puts all the investors at risk, but it, that means actually all investors everywhere. So, okay, so that's, that's the pros and cons of, of this thing. Uh, rendering occupancy, that's, that's a very important one in my opinion, because uh, every investor, you know, we have a, a problem in, in Ontario, which is called the occupancy period, the phantom mortgage, and that means that the developer can give you the fees and start charging you even though the building is not complete. I prefer the building went straight to mortgage, but it's, it's rare that it happens in Ontario. Most of them go uh, occupancy period. I don't like it. It's a waste of money for investors. Um, I guess developers make a bit of cash on it. I wish it was just, they didn't use that option. But if they do, and most do, they, you can ask, or they maybe tell you, you can render your occupancy. If your occupancy is six months or 12 months, which could happen, you can still put a tenant in legally. You don't have to argue with the developer. Let me put the tenant in because I'm an investor. That's why I bought the unit. So let me put the tenant in. So developers that sell to investors, they give all these deposit, all these uh, incentives to investors. Um, they should also add this one. And most of them these days do, but maybe previously no, because you know, the situation was a little different. So that is a very, very important to me. That is actually on top of my list, okay? All right, the next one is called cash back on closing. Now that's a really interesting one. Um, it's not exactly you get a cash back. It's more of they reduce your total price on closing. So if you get to the close, um, you're gonna get a certain discount saying, okay, you close, you know, I'll give you 10 or 20 or $30,000 discount. Um, if you're going to assign your condo, you don't care for that because if you're an investor and you bought this uh, in order to flip, you don't care for this because you, for this because you don't intend on closing. Uh, but if you are intending on closing, you will buy an assignment with a cash back on closing or more like a discount on, on registration, it should really be called, then I think it's more attractive. So there's no, you know, it's, uh, if you're an end user, going to use the unit, buy the unit, close on the unit, live on the unit, that's, that's very, very high on my list because it reduces your PSF. Um, but if you're just going to flip it, it doesn't mean anything to you, okay? So this is why I say actual discount on price. Um, what that means is they give you a real discount on price right from the list. Now, that usually doesn't happen. It may happen soon. Um, you can see discount if you buy like the VIP or the Platinum. Obviously, we sell the units for five, ten, twenty, thirty thousand less than what we call the public price. 
Uh, so that is an actual discount on price, but remember price is always a result of the market, of what's available and how many people want it. There's a lot of stuff available, nobody wants it, it's usually overpriced, but if everyone wants to buy whatever you have for sale, whether it's a condo or a widget, and you don't have enough of them, you can bring the price up. So that is important because this will actually change your PSF and reduce your deposits accordingly, okay? So that to me will be one of the top of the list. Uh, the next one is upgrades. So a lot of developers, what they do, especially in, in the final stages of building, um, they give free upgrades. Uh, so they'll say, here's 10,000 in upgrades, 20,000, 30, 50,000 upgrades. Uh, that's okay. The problem with the upgrades, of course, with you buy from developers, first of all, the price could be much higher than you could do it from the Home Depot um, by yourself. But of course, it's been installed for you and you go into the unit and it's already there, which is great. Uh, because imagine that they gave you some kitchen that is okay, um, but, then, but then you had to rip off the old kitchen, get all the work done, and then, ah, so complicated, right? So... That's the thing. Um, there's pros and cons for everything in life, even this. So the upgrades, they could be useful. Um, but again, if you're going to go flip the unit, you don't care for that. If you're in a, it's really more for people who are going to live in the unit. And I think if you're doing like a, your typical one bedroom or one plus den for, for investing, who cares for the upgrades? I mean, it's not going to change your return. It's not like the renter is going to pay you more because you got a fancier kitchen. It's still a kitchen. And if your floors are this type and not that type, it's not going to make a lot of difference. It's only going to make a difference if you're an end user, okay? So if you're not an end user, upgrades don't mean anything to you. The other thing you should know is when the developer is about to, let's say they still have, uh, they have 100 units in the building, they started building because they sold 60, 70%, whatever the bank wanted to sell, and now they start building, and they have, out of 100 units, let's say they have 15 units left uh, for sale, and now they have to start ordering all the kitchens and the floors and all the finishes and the trims. So the developer, they, they may go and what they're gonna do is they, they going and they're going to get um, ordered everything that you need. They need to order the kitchens, they need to order the trims, they need to order everything that is in the unit. So they may, because the developer gets a bulk discount and don't forget those upgrades, those dollars are retail dollars, not wholesale dollars, okay? So it doesn't cost the developer that much. Let's say it costs the developer half of what they give you. Um, so they might as well, a lot of developers go and put all the upgrades they got um, on the units, especially the penthouse units, the large units, the fancy units. So if you, if you are buying from a developer, and if you're buying late in the game, those units might have been upgraded already by the developer, okay? So you may get those upgrades for free anyways. It kind of depends on where you are in the timeline. Okay, the next one and the last one for today is the rental guarantee. Now, what is a rental guarantee? That means that the developer will come to you and basically say, you can go, Yossi Kaplan, rental guarantee. Let's see what happens. And this should bring back, so here you got rental guarantee. These are the videos. Let's see what images he finds, and of course, everything. So rental guarantee, Yossi Kaplan. So you can read more about rental guarantee, how it works. Uh, basically, rental guarantee means a developer will allow you, okay, so these are some things that we've, we've marked as rental guarantee, two-year property management, rental guarantee. That really means that the developer will allow you, I'll put these seven together here, uh, the developer will allow you to rent the unit back to the developer as you get occupancy or as you close. You got to check which one it is. If you don't know, ask me, I'll tell you. And what's going to happen is the developer is guarantee you for one or two or three years, whatever it is, a certain rental guarantee. Now, is that good? It sounds really good and it could be really good, but you got to check if the rental guarantee makes sense to you. So to me, rental guarantee makes sense if, for example, it covers all my costs and maybe a little more. So if that rental guarantee puts me in a positive cash flow where every month after I cover the mortgage, the condos, the, tax, the, the, the condo fees and the taxes, all these, without, I don't count the hydro in because usually the tenant will pay it. 
Um, if I cover all these, or maybe even cover and more, make a bit of a cash flow, positive cash flow to my pocket every month, that's really, really attractive. So the rental guarantee, it will be number one on the list if it actually breaks even for me or more. But it's not going to be that great on my list if it's not breaking even. How to know if the rental guarantee breaks even? Well, you go to the condo calculator. Let's go to the condo calculator. I'm just going to search for it, see what comes up. Let's go to the video and go to the video of the condo calculator. And there condo you go. Calculator. And the condo calculator is a spreadsheet that you could use. Um, download it for free from the condocalculator.ca and you'll find out if your condo breaks even. So you can actually put these numbers in um, and see what's going on. You enter your values in the, in the yellow and then you're going to get results in the green. And since they tell you what the rental guarantee would be, you can actually calculate for yourself like I do here in the video and see if it makes sense for you. Okay? So that would be... As long as it's done right, to, for me, that would be my top choice. The rental guarantee would be my top choice. Okay? So today we spoke about the seven best and worst condo problems incentives. So what have we learned? I'm just going to summarize real quick and we're done. First of all, we learned that it really depending if you're an investor, meaning you want to flip the unit, or you're an end user, want to buy and live in the unit. Second, not everything is what it looks like, okay? Um, there's some incentives that they bestow on you, which is great if you wanted to use them, but if you don't use them, you don't care for those. You care for others. And number one, absolutely, will be the actual discount on price. Can I get that condo for less money now? Because that will reduce my need for mortgage, that will reduce my deposit, reduce everything. And number one for me, and that's for me, will be the rental guarantee as long as that thing breaks even or makes me a bit of money. Now, if the rental guarantee is not enough to cover, that means I still need to put money out of my pocket every month to cover up. Now, it could be good if I don't have enough money for it right now or I really want the unit for the long term. I don't mind, like, popping in a few more dollars every month. So, you know, it's, it's subjective. Same with the upgrades. If I'm going to live in the unit, great. If I'm not going to live in the unit, I don't care for the upgrade. It just costs me more. I'm not going to get more money for it. Same with the deposit. Same with all these things, okay? So that's it for today. If you're thinking of investing or selling, call, give me a call, Yossi Kaplan. Find my contact right here, yossikaplan.com, urbanrealtytoronto.com. If you want to find anything, torontocondosforsale.com, you can find all... It'll just complete the address for you and give you complete information, both on resale and new construction. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Yossi Kaplan, any questions in the comments?